So over the past 15 years or so, I have been looking for a really great acoustic guitar tone, especially when I'm playing live. Um, my name's Tim Moxie, and I am a singer-songwriter, and I mainly play the acoustic guitar when I sing. And I'm going to share with you today what has been probably 15 years worth of research and discovery about acoustic guitar tones and what works for me. So let's get into it. But first of all, I'm going to tell you I'm playing my trusty Cole Clark FL2. I have my, my, red, my Redwood one going on here. And we're going to jump down to the pedal board and have a look at what we got going on. So first of all, we have um, the TC Electronic Polytune. I really like this tuner. I've had a couple of tuners over the years, and um, the first one that I had was a, a, a um, Korg Pitch Black. And the Pitch Black was great, and I really liked the display on it. But whenever I'd push this in, it would pop. And I believe that's to do with um, the buffer or something going on inside the pedal. I did look it up at one point and found with this particular pedal, I can have it on a setting where when I press it and it goes into mute, it won't pop because of the active kind of pickup in the acoustic. So I really liked this polytune and the mini one kind of fits well on this, on this pedal board because the pedal board's quite small. But it's got a great display. You know, you can see it really well when you're on stage. You can even do the thing where you strum all strings and see what's in tune and what's not in tune. Um, but I don't find I use that very often on stage. I just kind of use it more as a party trick to show people what uh, what the polytune can do. So I really like the polytune. It's well worth a uh, well worth having a look at. Moving on, I've got the uh, the Fishman Aura Spectrum DI. Now, first of all, I really just like having my own DI. I feel like that's a really good um, a good thing for an acoustic guitarist to have. Just a a, a good DI. Um, that way, you can run a mic line out and you don't have to worry about the quality of the DIs that are in the places that you're performing or if you're bringing your own sound system if it's already on your pedal board you don't need to worry about bringing another thing I really like this um, this DI now the reason I got this DI is actually because my dad bought it for himself and he didn't like the sound of it or love the sound of it and um, I actually found as I played around with it I actually had to go with the, the custom user settings and find one that worked for me. So I plugged it into a computer and went through all the different kind of settings and loaded up something that worked really well for me and my and my Cole Clark. And I know that <clears throat> I know that it can be hard to find a sound with this. Um, there's a, there's a couple of features on this, obviously volume and EQ. But you have this blend knob here and this compressor. Um, the blend knob is really great for kind of taking the quackiness out of a piezo a piezo pickup. I'll sh I'll show you. Let me do it. Let me do an audio demonstration. So there you've got that kind of quackiness that's, that's coming into the guitar. But when I turn the blend up, you'll hear that the quackiness will go away. So there's always an inherent kind of mid-range in an acoustic guitar anyway. But um, one of the things I've seen with people doing reviews of particularly about this uh, DI is that they turn this blend knob like crazy way up. And one of the challenges with that is it sounds really metallic. I'm going to, I'll do an audio demonstration with this blend knob and I'm going to, I'm going to turn it up. I normally keep it about, about there, which I guess is like, I don't know, quarter two, whatever, whatever that is um, around there, maybe just a little bit past quarter two. That's, that to me is where the sweet spot is on my setup. But if I go too high, I'll show you. When you turn that blend knob up, way too much and it just ends up being a little bit too metallic-y and, and weird sounding it really starts sounding very unnatural so I find just trying to get that nice natural sound that blend knob 
just at that particular point for me worked really well. But this may change in your own settings. I, I would really strongly encourage you if you if you use this DI to play around with that and um and get a, get your own settings happening there. Now the other thing is this compressor. Well, the compressor the compressor is quite cool. It, it kind of takes a bit off, especially if you're going from finger pick like me. I go a lot of finger picking and going to some strumming, right? Um, but the problem is that this compressor, if you turn it up too much, it just kind of catches it way too much. I'll show you. Like you can hear that that's really kind of like squashing, squashing the sound. So again, I kind of find that like using this sparingly. Just kind of catches the tops of the sound and, and kind of gets a nice full sound going. All right, I'll um I'll show you the the EQs as well because they're quite they're quite nice and musical, um but they can get quite extreme. I don't find myself going past kind of past twelve o'clock much at all either way because otherwise it ends up being a bit too much. I'll show you that. So as you can hear, the, the, the EQs can get really extreme and they are really musical and really nice sounding EQs, um, but I tend to, to, tend to be quite, um, do quite minimal uh, EQing with them. Now, the, um, the Fishman does have a tuner on it. Um, I, don't, I don't love the tuner because it doesn't have a lot of detail and um, the feedback thing, I've actually never really used that much. So um, it's just never been, never been an issue for me. So yeah, these features I've I've never really used on my on my pedal board. Um, so moving on from the Fishman, I have these two Strymon effects going out of the um, effects loop of the Fishman, and I'm using uh, Loopy Loopy pedal cables, which is an Australian cable maker um, and pedal pedal maker that I really like. I use their cables all the time. I really really like what they do. Um, I'll put a link in the description below so you can so you can check those guys out. Um, Probably the one, the one effect that I have on all the time is my blue sky. And um, I've got the settings generally always with a low damp and high damp at uh, 12 o'clock and then the pre-delay completely off. Um, and then I generally play, depending on, the, um, depending on the, the venue that I'm at, I have to play around with the decay and mix time just to kind of get a nice reverb happening in the room. Um, but I'll give, you a, I'll give you a listen to what that sounds like.
Now, originally when I first got this, um, I was tempted to use the, the shimmer setting on the acoustic guitar, but that shimmer setting just sounds a little bit too, um, a bit too metallic to my ears. So I tend to use the, the room, um, I tend to use the room on a normal setting and to get that like, um, to get that nice thing, but I'll show you the shimmer. Cause it's kind of, it kind of, you know, I, I thought it would, would be handy as like a, um, like a, a pad behind my guitar, but it, it didn't quite turn out the way that I wanted it to. So you can kind of hear that it's like, it's that bit of that metallic kind of sound, which is really cool with electric guitars, but for my acoustic, just having that nice room sound was, was really cool. But I did end up finding a cool pad sound that I really like, and I put that in my favorite um, on the Strymon, um, which was just a really kind of long, long decay pad type sound. So when I am finger picking, especially if I'm playing in church or something and it's just me on stage, I can get some cool like ambience playing behind a, um, the preacher talking or praying or something. So uh, let me show you that sound. Now, I really like that sound, but what actually takes it to the whole next level is this, um, is this delay. And um, the reason I got this delay is actually because my dad <laughs> bought it for himself. I, I get a lot of, uh, of hand-me-down stuff from my dad. He loves, he loves gear as much as I do, and um, so he, he's, given me, he's given me a number of pieces of gear. And this, um, this delay was given to me by him. And he actually upgraded to the Strymon timeline, so he has a lot more a lot more um, options than I do. But the um, when we plugged this the bucket delay into the Blue Sky, and I, you can see I've got a fairly high uh, level on the bucket loss and I'm fairly low on the repeats. Um, but when I kind of engage this, we get this like delay that doesn't have a massive kind of pulse, but as it kind of degrades and goes goes back, it like creates a really cool effect with the with the um, the reverb so I really like that I'll give you I'll give you a listen to that So one of the things that automatically grabs me when I when I hear that sound is just it, it kind of opens up this warmth and this just incredible, I don't know, there's just something that happens when you put the two of them together that kind of just brings this like depth of sound. And I really, I really love that tone. And you obviously, if you're, if you're playing to a particular tempo, you can get that tap in, but I, I don't find that it, the tap matters too much. You obviously get a pulse, but the timing of that doesn't, doesn't always matter, but you can tap it in if you want to. Um, that's really all I use this um, this delay for, though. I don't do much else with it. Um, I use this the blue sky pretty much always on. But the thing is, especially if you're strumming, if you're doing a lot of strumming here, and you have that on, like it just ends up getting real messy real quick because you got a big long tail there. But when you're doing some finger picking. You know, it can, it can kind of just linger there for a little while. And in, I guess in a church setting, that's really cool because it, it doesn't draw too much attention to, to like your playing and, and, you know, the focus can go on, on the, what the preacher's saying or whatever's happening there. But it's also cool if you're playing like an acoustic ballad. You can have a bit of more 
sustain of your guitar kind of underneath that. But again, if you if you go to strum with that kind of with that kind of thick delay and reverb, it just gets real messy real quick. And it can be challenging to actually turn them off if you're going from one to the other. That's something I find. So having this kind of simplicity of pedal board, um, that is something that I find challenging is trying to get that trying to get that pedal off, especially if I'm singing at the same time. So I tend to do one when I can and then jump to another. And I j often go with the the delay for the sorry the reverb first and leave the delay on because there's that tail's not too like aggressive so it doesn't so it's messy but it's not as messy as if you had both on at the same time because <laughs> you just get that crazy long tail, which is which is kind of cool. So I'll go through some of the other the other little aspects of this board that aren't to do with the um, the 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 sound of it. I've got it on this um, pedal train Nano Plus, um, which is a which is a great little pedal board. The only thing I wish I had to create um, underneath it, I had to create these. Uh, I don't know if you can see. I had to put some more pads on it so I could fit my. Um, my Strymon Ohi under there as well, so I've got the power and this power, but the the board itself wasn't um, wasn't tall enough to actually get that power. And my my I haven't actually cut these cable ties off. I put this back together recently and kind of did the cabling, and it's not the neatest. In fact, my dad always did my a lot of my cabling, and um, <laughs> he's in Japan at the moment, so he hasn't been doing my cabling at all. So I've had to do it myself, and it's not as neat as if he does it. But um, yeah, I'm using the Strymon Ohi underneath. The power supply is just there. Um, and then the Pedal Train Nano Plus. And that seems to be the perfect size for me. It just works. It's really easy to carry in. It has a little, a, a, like a little gig bag. Um, I haven't had to fly with it, but I'm sure if you had to fly with it, you just chuck it into a, su into a suitcase and you'd be really, really easy to, to kind of get it in a suitcase because it's quite a small little package. Um, I have been really happy with this setup. I've had bigger pedal boards. I had my electric and my acoustic kind of together at one point on a um, the the pedal train junior and had a switch going between the two. And I liked that setup, but so often I'd find myself either playing electric guitar or playing acoustic guitar. And I'm not a massive electric guitarist. I don't do a lot of electric kind of stuff. So just having something simple and small for my acoustic guitar and having a good tone every time that I play was really, really handy. So I'm going to chuck links in the description for all of these. If you want to take a um, better look at them, you can also use those codes for um, just to kind of support me on the channel. Anything you buy just through that affiliate link will help me out. Please like and subscribe if you're, if you're liking what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to be coming out with some more product reviews and some uh, microphones and all that kind of stuff with singer-songwriters as well as technique and my own covers of different songs. So please stay tuned to that and I'll catch you on the next one.